Hello everyone, it's the end of the year, hello, and welcome to today's video. What's gonna be today's video? Nothing much really, it's just kind of an end of the year wrap up for the channel. Yeah, before we head into the new year. Uh, I will be doing stuff on the 31st, aka watching The Whale with my sister, and then eating pizza, and then waiting for the new year to come in. <laughs> and that's gonna be my new year. So I wanted to relax, sit back and relax, and kind of just talk to you guys about the year in general. Because it's been one hell of a year, uh, in general, in life, and in the channel as well. So I just wanted to talk about some stuff. Let's begin. Yeah, so in terms of life, I'm definitely doing better. I feel I'm in a better place in terms of, not, not in terms of like, well I guess mentally and everything else too. I mean literally I'm in a better place than I was staying at now that we have uh, our own place that we can call home. It's been a big help for the mental boost. I definitely started to feel crazy and depressed by the end of it in some ways. Not actual depressed because I, I don't know how to depress it, but there was definitely a huge like unending shit that felt like I was constantly in and I don't feel that way anymore and I'm happy to always be able to just be in a place with my uh, my mom and my brother and then hopefully we're gonna work our way up to eventually getting to a place where we can have a place where everyone can be together where it's my mom my brother my sister my dad and me and we can all chill and be in a happy home and that's something to look forward to in the future and something i'm probably going to be working towards as well as long as we have a bunch of other stuff i was able to take on a bunch of more responsibilities at work so that's cool that means i should be able to get more money and money makes the world go round. the channel itself has been doing much better which is great because at the beginning of the year um, actually it wasn't the beginning, it was when they announced the Dragalia shutdown, it was looking really bad. Um, I was losing a lot of subscribers, and for a while I was able to say, well, it's just bot views, so it's fine, you lose them. I always gained them in increments, but I always gained them back. And it got to the point where I wasn't gaining them back, and I was just like in huge negatives, and I was just like, what do I do? And then the answer was, I'm gonna do what I always do, make up some bullshit and continue moving forward. Because that was the problem when after the Jugalia set, uh, nut sh shutdown notice was given is that I just didn't feel like, I just didn't know what to do, to be honest. It was definitely a feeling of like, do I continue doing this? Because this at this point it had been like, what, the th second game that had been pulled under me where my entire channel was kind of based around them. And thankfully I had learned from or Collection and it ended up being that funny enough, even though Jugalia was the main... Um, <laughs> game featured on the channel. The actual game that did better was always Fago, and I forgot when it started. I think it was around the time I did a beginner's guide for Fago. It really kind of popped off for me, and then from that point on, the Dragalia stuff I feel like never recovered from being the top earner and the top viewing stuff. In terms of metrics, I still love doing every single Dragalia video and doing all that. And if I had it my way, I would still have Dragalia. Chances are by now, Dragalia would probably be the second one. And going into the new year, I would definitely make that clear that Fago would be the main focus. And Dragalia was definitely going to be the game that I would always cover. But it was always going to take a second place to Fago because Fago is where a vast majority of people come to watch my channel stuff at this point. And that's true to today. Uh, and then... Uh, Side Games made that decision for me by just saying, actually, the game is ending. Whoop. And so I was like, well, shit. But yeah, there was a definitely uh, a lull in the channel, and I feel like it's still not at the same level. If you don't know, um, the reason the channel got so... Was it two years ago? Because there was a point where it used to be infrequent updates back when it was um, Dokkan and pre Dragalia Day, so it was Ore Collection. I wasn't uploading every single day, you were lucky to get one once a week, and it was occasionally just a to-be-release that we had was late by like two weeks or so, and that's kind of how the channel was, um, and that kind of changed with Jagalia, so I'm always going to be thankful for that, but the main reason I had it was that it was a distraction to take away from the fact that uh, we had lost my house and everything, so it was something to help put my mind off of stuff if it was we work to kind of like rebuild our lives and do all that stuff again and it, it, it's been a crazy set of stuff that has happened to me in, in those years 
Uh, and that was even pre-pandemic stuff. Oh my god, so many things happened. <laughs> so many legal things and everything else, but hopefully everything's starting to look back to being normal for me and kind of returning to life as it is. And yeah, so in terms of the channel, now that you've heard some personal stuff, what's gonna look like the future of the channel? Well, hopefully I just release more stuff, to be honest. Uh, now that I have Fago, Fago is always going to be the backbone that I know that, well, the people, to feed the algorithm of YouTube, you need to have something. And I've understood this for a while now, and I've never really gone deep into it. And the reason is, is that I'm too much of a fan of just, like, doing whatever the hell I feel like. Yes, I love Fago, but what if I don't want to release anything Fago related? That's always the thing that's going to be kind of, like, an issue with me, is that <laughs> those videos will always tank in terms of viewership and stuff like that. And that's why I have, thankfully, the dedicated people who go and watch my other stuff. There's, you know, not every single video is going to do well, and that's perfectly fine. Just like every single um, painting or thing you draw is going to be good. You just have to go out there and release stuff, and someone will find enjoyment from it, or maybe no one will find enjoyment for it. You never know. Uh, that's kind of the way I approach it, is I put stuff up on the wall... And the people who respond most to my stuff is, of course, the Fago things. But for everything else, I occasionally get, like, a couple of thumbs up, stuff like that. And I go, like, oh, yeah, this makes it worth doing. Speaking of making it worth doing, we definitely need to get back in the Shonen Archive. If you've been wondering where is Shonen Archive, um, me and Zen are cursed on Fridays. We have to find a new day. I don't know what's happening. It feels like actively God is trying to stop us from recording Shonen Archive. Last update... Um, Zen got COVID for like the fourth time, so I don't want to record with him being sick. <laughs> it's just not the right thing to do. It's It just doesn't make any sense for me to be like, hey, I know you're sick. Sit, get, get, get down and play this, with, talk about this, talk about that. So it really put a dent in a lot of plans. I still have a lot of plans that I hope to someday achieve. But yeah, we know. We we definitely want to get back to Gintama. And we have to finish the four last four episodes of Chainsaw Man. And talk about the last episodes of GX. And then we had other series that we want to talk about and look at. And Shonen Archive is really fun to do. And we are really thankful for all the people that like go around us talking about it. Because it's... Not an easy series to do, first of all. It's a lot of time to actually put time aside to watch all these animes when both me and Zen work pretty hard jobs. My job, thankfully, right now I'm in a big period of just, like, not doing anything. But during my craziest week, I was, like, working 60 hours a week. So, and most of that's nighttime. So, when would I sleep? <laughs> and the, where I would sleep would be the time that we would record Shonen Archive. And when would I even have time to watch the anime episodes? But, you know, I would gladly find the time for it. If Zen was available on Friday, we would gladly make time for it and talk about it. But as it stands right now, we're just waiting for it. But don't worry, we haven't forgotten it. Going into 2023, I definitely want to get back into Shonen Archive and get more back into watching Gintama and everything else. Um, in terms of other videos, there's still going to be other videos released. I don't really know what's going to happen in 2023. I'm really looking forward to the Dragon Ball card game. Uh, hopefully it's similar to Master Duel. I think Master Duel was like 66% my most played Steam game <laughs> for the year. <clears throat> I absolutely love Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Though if you're always wondering, hey, where's the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel videos? I would love to do them. Um, but the problem is, is that I don't know how many times you guys would just want me to watch the same deck over and over again i have deck variety but i really like playing decks where it's like um i'm trying to learn it or i'm trying to floodgate my opponent in some way uh labyrinth is currently the big one i'm into i love labyrinth at the moment um i think it really works well in the best of one format that master duel has if you go first if you go second and you have no hand traps and congratulations you just lose <laughs> there's very little you could do <clears throat> besides, like, pray to God that your opponent just has a absolutely fucking terrible turn and that they don't activate any trap in response or they don't have a singular negate whatever they have. 
<laughs> but going first, I really like the deck. It's a very fun control deck. And hopefully when they add the other Labyrinth cards, um, the deck will only improve from there. Um, next, uh, Marvel Snap. Absolutely love Marvel Snap. I did a whole big stream about it, um, which I'll probably be uploading some of it. I don't know if I'm going to cut it down or do something else with it, but I'm definitely going to release some of it. Maybe a highlight of some of the best matches. It was a lot of fun. I ran into a lot of dumb decks. Um... I was playing a singular deck, so but that's because I was tr I'm trying to get to infinity. Man, it's tough. It's a tough ass climb, um, especially in the current meta of the game. It really does feel like, damn, it's too much. It's too much to handle. Um, but I would love to go back into doing some more Marvel Snap stuff, releasing some Marvel Snap videos. Another thing, YouTube Shorts. I have no idea how to do YouTube Shorts. I should look into doing some of that stuff. Maybe I'll experiment with some of the Marvel Snap stuff. If you have anything specific, if you're listening to the video at this point in, feel free to tell me what would I be interested in. I was trying to think about what Fago thing would I do in short form. Because it's a real shame because I don't really record gameplay for Fago. <laughs> and the reason is... It's a very good reason. Um... Because I don't know if anyone would be interested. I don't do, like, the challenge quests a whole bunch. And when I do do them, I, like, use all three of my command seals and just beat it. And then force my way through it that way. Um, maybe it'd be fun to try and do some team thing and be like, hey, here's this. And here's what I'm thinking. And then see what people would be like, oh, God, this was such a mistake or stuff like that. I'm really good in the looping aspect of the game in terms of the challenge quest stuff i've always been someone who has not been the best at it i'm definitely someone who brute forces every single encounter that they run into except for during um nero fest and stuff like that that i'll actually try and see if i can have any specific units that can kind of help me out in the situation but or if i can use quests in some way and completely blitz it whichever one let me know, though, if you have anything specific to that end. And, yeah, in terms of other videos, I definitely have other things I want to do. Just so it's, like, not always... Again, now that I have... I know for a fact I have Fago videos and that they will do moderately well if I release them, I can just start doing other videos and just release them. There is a part of me that really wants to play through all of Persona 3 Royal. Um, in, like, I guess, hour chunks. It would take a very long time to finish, but... I think it'd be pretty fun. I want to do more streams um, and kind of release streams and maybe do highlights of streams like that way. Cut them up and be like, here's some highlights of it and then you can enjoy it if you want. And then if you want the full thing, here you go. I'm pretty sure it's bad for your videos if your channel, if you release full on videos that not a lot of people watch. So that's why I very rarely put up the full video uh, anymore. <laughs> Uh, the people who want it will find it, and they will watch it, and I thank them for it. But for the most part, the vast majority of people are like, what the fuck is this? And then they just don't look at it. This isn't Fago related. Some other things. I kind of want to <clears throat> play a little bit more of the other type moon stuff. I don't think I'd ever be able to get... I've, if you don't know this, which is going to be really funny if you come from the Fago side, I've never actually uh, played the VN for Fate Stay Night. I think I've always said as a subscriber goal... I would play Faith State Night on the channel. Um, but I actually don't know how to get it working because it's like a JP game and then you have to set it up and do a whole rigmarole. And then I have to see if this is the porn version or the non porn version. Uh, obviously, we would be playing the porn version and I just have to censor all the porn. And then you just have the dialogue and then I lose all access to my everything. Then I have to set it away from everything. So I'll figure it out. <laughs> There's a lot of problems of doing for go if you want to do the sexy scenes. But it'd probably be better for me to just get rid of them. The vast majority of fans have already just like mocked them. And they just want to get rid of them. And re release them from the system. So maybe I'll make that as a goal. If I get to 4,000. Yeah, how about that? If I get to 4,000 subscribers, then I'll play Fate Stay Night the entirety of it on the channel. Blind. Um... I kind of want to do extra. I kind of want... The problem with doing extra of the PSP game is that I'm pretty sure the the regular version is still being worked on, the remake of it, so I kind of want to save it for that. But I wonder how many people have actually played the PSP game. I don't know about that. I'll figure it out. But yeah, that'd be cool to do. It, it'd be other stuff that are, are tactically Fate Stay Night things related, for Go things, but not 100%. Uh, probably never get into Tsukihime at this point. I just given up on it. 
I've understood, and I give up on it. Uh, other games that I would look forward to? I mean, it's a whole big-ass world coming in 2023. More Game Boy games. If it was possible, it's a shame that we... If I lived with my sister, I would definitely get my siblings together and finally do that full playthrough of Hamtaro Ham Ham Adventures um, together and do a full thing. I definitely want to do more things with my brother. That'd be kind of fun to do, uh, besides just doing for Ghost Summons. Uh, one of my favorite videos on the channel is actually the one where we talked about the Fago leaks. Not Fago leaks, we talked about Persona 5 leaks for Dragalia, and it's an entire thing. It goes into talking about, like, Up and Up 2, and I don't know. I just like talking to my brother and my sister, so any excuse to kind of be with them would be good. I kind of would like to talk to other people as well. And now that I actually have my own place and I can kind of adjust my sleep schedule... It would be kind of cool to do stuff with other people besides just like 13 Nights of Halloween, um, which is the thing I do at <laughs> here. If it was possible, ah, oh, man, I love the Mew Mew Force, but it's so hard for us to get together to actually like record something, um, which is a shame because we all have like, not only do we all have our own jobs, some, some people work in very specific industries where it's like, I can't actively ask you. <laughs> you stop working on what you're doing and be here for this dub video where I do this so all things to think about and yeah let me see what else was happening in 2023 may as well talk about some other stuff I just enjoyed in 2023 we might as well while we're here I think my favorite movie for this year was definitely uh, Pinocchio the uh, Del Toro version of it I watched it with the family over for Christmas Beautiful movie. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, both in terms of story and animation. I love uh, stop motion animation. Um, I love Del Toro and I love the story of Pinocchio. Um, both the Disney version and the actual real version. Uh, which is the fable. Of, or not a fable, it was a book. Uh, and so that... I thought it did an extremely good job of adapting basically all forms of it. It didn't feel too much like the Disney one. It felt like his own specific kind of take on it. Um, the story of it was amazing. And by the end of it, the entire, it like took out the entire family. That was a, that was a movie where it was like the entire family going, uh, uh, bawling their eyes out watching. But okay, I would 100% go watch it if you haven't seen it. It was beautiful. I don't even want to talk about it too much just because of all the things that I think it stands for is just wonderful and more things like it should exist uh next uh favorite game of the year i think i actually did one i did a whole fucking crazy list of stuff where it's like oh yeah some of my favorite things um let me see if i can find it real quick just before i talk about more things uh dun 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 but yeah i definitely ob some obvious ones were Master Duel, Snap, Elden Ring, um, Pokemon. Oh, I was a deep love for Pokemon. I think Pokemon might have been pretty close. I forget. It was pretty close. Yeah, Pokemon Scarlet did end up being on my number one, with number two being Elden Ring. Uh, absolutely love Pokemon Scarlet, which is funny because I don't do any videos on it. But the reason is, is because I just didn't want to do any videos on it i just wanted to enjoy this game and it was fucking fantastic elden ring was my number two uh i love elden ring it's actually making me kind of want to go back and give a dark souls another chance they never fucking have dark souls remastered so here's the fucking terrible thing because i forgot that they did this dark souls i have the dark souls on pc but the pc version originally was fucked that's why they did a remastered version now, the smart thing that would have been to do was to just give everyone who had it on the PC that required you to download fucking DS Fix to make it actually playable. They should have just given that to me for free for buying this piece of shit game when it was a piece of shit and it was never fixed. Instead, what they said is like, here's a discount. You can buy it again. And at the time, I was like, fuck no, I'm not going to buy that again. Are you crazy? And then when... Uh, <laughs> It came around after Elden Ring, I was like, well, I guess I'll just wait for Remastered to go on sale and I'll buy it again. And then we'll try it out there. Turns out it's never on sale, because that entire time it was on half off for everyone there, they just never have sales for it anymore. Which sucks. I mean, I still have Dark Souls 3 if I want to try it that way, and just play Dark Souls 3. I have a Steam Deck now, so maybe I could just put it on the Steam Deck and enjoy it my way that way. 
it'd probably be better than putting it on the full screen and just trying to play it there. Uh, but yeah, it definitely made me want to give other Souls likes a try after not liking any of the Souls games for so long or not understanding them. Um, so that was definitely there. Marvel Snap is number three. Master Duel is number four, which is really funny because of how much time I spent with Master Duel. But Marvel Snap is just like so. Mm, mm, mm. But I will say the presentation for Master Duel I think is still better than Marvel Snap. It's not there yet, but it's pretty nice. Um, the variant stuff in Marvel Snap, oh, some great stuff there. And then my number five was DMNT Shredder's Revenge. Uh, I was really sad that I wasn't able to play River City Girls 2 in time, because um, that might have changed it, because I'm trying to think of the only thing that would have potentially gotten Shredder's Revenge off the list, and it would have been the sequels to River City Girls. Um, but I wasn't able to play it in time, because I was too busy, and that game came out at like $40, so I was like, I need to wait until I have... Uh, and then it was also during December, where it was Christmas, and I was trying to make sure I had gifts for everyone in the family, so, you know, hold on to that. Um... Yeah, and that's definitely what my top five for games were. Uh, TV shows? I don't watch... I guess Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man's a TV show, right? <laughs> I'll go with Chainsaw Man. Loved it. Uh, I was already a fan of the manga of it, so obviously I'm going to like that. Manga of the Year. What about that? What what manga got me going? I'm just going to give it to One Piece again. As much as I love Jujutsu Kaisen and The Return of Chainsaw Man has been fantastic with Part 2... I think I ended up caring a little bit more about all the stuff with One Piece. Uh, my Hero. You're getting there. It's a shame because I really do think they're fumbling. He's fumbling a lot of the aspects of it, but I think the heart is in the right place. The problem is, is that you can have your heart in the right place and still be an idiot. That's 100% possible. <laughs> but I will still give some credit for at least trying. <laughs> Uh, damn shame. But anyway, I digress. Um, World Trigger has been fantastic as well. Spike's Family is also still very good. Oh, some good stuff that I'm still reading. I'm surprised that I'm still keeping up and reading all that. Some comic stuff, I definitely want to get back and reading a little bit more comics and get into that. There's a lot of stuff I just kind of want to get back into. I want to get back into reading stuff. I want to get back into doing so many things. And with the new year on the horizon, I definitely feel like this is the year where I can kind of try it. Um, I need to finish, I really want to go through a lot of Discworld. I think I'm currently, I finished one book of the Discworld. There's like 33 different books of Discworld. And I want to get through Death's Apprentice and before I start going through the other ones. And those have been very good, but they're so good that I want to just sit down, read, and enjoy my time, uh, with it. And it's kind of been tough because of all the things I do. But anyway, I'll figure it out. But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much if you watched it this long. God damn, this video was a while long. Um, Happy New Year. I'll see you guys in the new one. Hopefully we get into a lot of cool stuff, and hopefully the channel keeps growing from this point on. I wish you guys the best of luck if you're from the Fago side at summoning for um, Muramasa. I hope you get them, and if you're not going for him, I hope you're going for any, any of the SSRs that you want this year that you're going to get them. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, goddamn, wasn't it hilarious how f hard Dokkan fumbled the bag on Superhero? Okay, never mind. I need to talk about this. Dokkan fumbled so hard, it almost made Legends look like a good game. <laughs> Woo! I love it. As someone who plays Dokkan and hates Legends, there's nothing I like more than when <laughs> Dokkan fucks up so hard it makes the... The red-headed stepchild of the Dragon Ball universe look good by comparison. <laughs> oh, man. I, I love it. It's absolutely great. I hope we go into Especially because Dogon was already having a really weird year. The fact that they ended it off. One of their weirdest, most experimental year. A year that featured releasing Yajirobe as a TUR. Um, with some of the best animations and also as a solid ass unit, it's really funny how badly they me they missed um, they messed up on releasing Dragon Ball Superhero units. It's probably one of the biggest fumbles out there. It's hilarious. Not and I have not seen a fumble like this since people fell out of love with Attack on Titan Attack on Titan after the fumbling. I don't even read that, and I heard the fumbling, and I was like, damn, that must have been an intense fumble. 
But I think Dokkan fumbled really hard here at the end of the year. Still made plenty of money, because it's Dokkan. Of course it's going to make a shit ton of money, but still. That's something that you don't really recover from, in terms of uh, how shit it was. But anyway, now I'm going to end the video. Until next time, everyone, you guys have a good day. Happy, happy new year, and I'll see you guys in the year 2023. Peace out.